So with Apple announcing their brand new Glow Time event on September 9th, I thought this was a perfect opportunity to talk about Apple intelligence holistically because Apple has been marketing it very well and talking about that it's gonna be able to do this and kind of change how you do stuff day to day. But what does that actually mean for the individual user when it comes to Apple intelligence? Will you be using it day to day? How will it affect your day to day use cases? Those are all things that I wanna answer in this video. So without further ado, let's talk about Apple intelligence and exactly how you're gonna be using it come most likely October. Let's get into it. So before we do get started, I do want to mention that Apple Intelligence will be releasing alongside the 18.1 update on iOS, iPadOS, and then as well as Mac OS Sequoia and things like that. So do not expect this to come out with the iPhone 16 lineup. iPhone 16s will have 18.0, which will not include anything Apple Intelligence related. And then in terms of hardware supported, you will need an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max or newer in order to be able to use this on your iPhone. And then when it comes to your iPads and your MacBooks, you need to have an M-powered iPad or an M-powered MacBook for Apple intelligence to be supported on that hardware. So unfortunately, if you have an older iPhone, like an iPhone 14 Pro Max or even an iPhone 15, you will not be getting Apple intelligence, but I just wanted to make that known. I know it might not sound like the most fair, but you know, don't shoot the messenger. But now let's talk about Apple intelligence because I actually think that it's gonna make a day-to-day -day difference on how you're gonna be using your phone. And I'm already seeing some of these differences come to fruition using 18.1 beta 2. So let's quickly highlight what Apple Intelligence is because I think in its purest form, it's going to be the smartest version of Siri and an actual personal assistant that'll help you day to day with simple tasks like when is my flight, how do I get there, and using these contextual rules. So there's five main pillars that Apple brought up in their presentation at WWDC, and it's gonna be that it's powerful, so it's capable of offering truly useful help, it's intuitive, so easy to use, and it's accessible, and I think that's one of the key ones, so I think you're gonna be using Apple Intelligence without knowing you're using the Apple Intelligence, and that's going to be the key if, to see if this is gonna be well adopted. Apple also talked about integration as another one of their pillars, so baked into the core of the entire device, so it works natively across your device. It's also gonna be very personal to you specifically, so it understands your personal context, how you speak, how often you speak, what you're talking about in general, and then finally, it's gonna be extremely private. Apple spent a ton of time on security. We're not gonna talk about the security aspect too much in this video, but just know that Apple's fully focusing on security when it comes to all this personal context, personal data, and these use cases. So it's built from the ground up with privacy in mind. And Tim Cook said it best at that WWDC keynote that it's the Apple intelligence feature is to make your personal products even more useful and delightful. So I think that's going to be the all encompassing feeling with Apple intelligence that it's going to be easy to use overall. And as I mentioned, I've already been seeing that kind of happen even in the beta form. So now let's talk about the actual features and how you can actually use Apple intelligence moving forward. The first thing we're going to talk about is going to be the writing tools that come integrated. And these writing tools are some of the things that we're already seeing with 18.1. Now the current version of Apple intelligence isn't the full fledged version that we're going to probably get in its purest form in its ultimate form. But these language tools, are something that are now available with the 18.1 beta. So the first thing that comes up is going to be the writing tools. And this is what people are gonna be most familiar with because if you've ever used something like ChatGPT or any of these other AI assistants, that's one of the first things people do. They go in there, they like to summarize stuff, they like to use it as a proofreading tool, some grammar tools, maybe kind of changing the verbiage and how it sounds, make it more funny, make it more professional. And that's how I know people are using it from an email and business and professional perspective on a day-to-day -day basis. So now just imagine having that built in natively into every single application in the Apple ecosystem. So the writing tool AI will be able to rewrite and proofread your text from anywhere. And I think this is gonna be especially useful when it comes to writing articles or writing a professional email, or even if you're just texting in between friends, being able to then have something proofread so it sounds a little bit more correct is a great example of how Apple intelligence and the writing tool will be beneficial. And it shows up right on your keyboard. You're able to highlight an entire paragraph and summarize it. You can change the format of that summary to include bullet points and charts and graphs and things like that. So being able to use the writing tool built in is something that I can see people adopting extremely quickly in all facets of writing. Another cool language tool is the ability for prioritizing notifications and summarizing notifications as well. And I've been seeing this already with 18.1 and I think it's absolutely awesome and it's honestly kind of funny at times. So for instance, what this is doing is finally Apple's putting some effort into the notification system because it's a little bit convoluted if you really think about it, but it's gonna prioritize your notifications based on how often you use them and how often they think or Apple intelligence thinks you will actually wanna be able to see this. So of course, when it comes to iMessage, that's probably one of the more important ones, either that or email depending on how often you use that. So that'll always be at the top no matter when it came up. And also when it comes to summarizing these notifications, 
For instance, with football season coming around the corner, I'm in a bunch of different group chats for things like college football, you know, fantasy football, things of that nature. So there's constantly somebody talking and a bunch of conversations happening. So now I'm able to look at my phone after 50 messages have been sent and it'll give me a notification as to how many messages have been sent. And then in one or two lines, it'll summarize everything that was said in just a couple of different blurbs. It'll say like, people are talking about managing their football team or what the best situations are to draft this person and it works in every single context. For instance, I had a kind of a stressful day one day, I was texting my wife and she sent me back a couple of nice messages but in the summary it said that your wife is here for your emotional burden or something along those lines. So I did think that was kind of funny and this is extremely useful especially in those group chat settings where I don't want to read through the entire thing that probably has nothing to do with me but I want to understand the gist of what was going on in that conversation. Another new addition that's already available is going to be the reduce interruptions focus mode. So what this does is puts you into that do not disturb mode which for the most part just blocks out any and all notifications that aren't of the utmost importance unless you actually indicate that this contact can reach you during do not disturb mode. But this version of it is a little bit more on the smart side because it'll still let some notifications through where for instance if I am in do not disturb mode but I have my mom text me that there's an emergency even though I don't have her contact allowed to kind of slip through the do not disturb mode it'll still come through because Apple intelligence will realize that like maybe somebody's at the hospital or something drastic happened that I should know about even though I am in that do not disturb mode. So I think these language tools are going to be the ones that are going to be the most used especially to take action on because a lot of the other stuff I'm going to talk about is something that's going to be happening in the background of making it easier to use your iPhone. So now let's talk about image tools. Now image tools, a lot of these features are still not even available with the 18.1 beta update that we've been using on our personal iPhones. So I do want to just quickly run through these. These are more of features that I think are not really gimmicky, but more for fun, right? There's something that maybe you would use once or twice. Maybe you would use it to replace your, your meme application in your keyboard or something like that, but I don't see too much actual use cases and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below if you see some actual value in these image tools. So you have the ability to just create images from scratch with a simple type request or a sound request to Siri. You can let them know like, hey, I wanna have a you know tadpole swimming in an ocean full of sharks that has a couple of legs and is on the verge of becoming a frog. And then it'll kind of spit out a couple of different images in a couple of different like genres or formats. And then you get that image creation from scratch, which is built into your iPhone. You also have Genmoji, which is just an emoji creator, but an emoji creator that you can create something from scratch. So if you have an emoji that you want to use, but it isn't in one of those hundreds of emojis that are pre-built into the keyboard, then you can just create one from scratch, or maybe you want to combine a few, and that's always good to see. Then you have the cleanup tool in the Photos application. I mentioned this one briefly. This one still is not available with the 18.1 update, but it's similar to Magic Eraser on the Google side, where if you take a picture and you want to remove some objects from that image, you can then easily do that with this new tool, the cleanup tool. And then you have the image wand, another feature which I'm dying to try out, which isn't available on the beta update. And the image wand works perfectly with the iPad Pro or any iPad for that matter, as long as you have an Apple Pencil and you're able to draw a circle around this note and then AI will then automatically take that note and create a new image based on whatever's around that note, which is a very cool feature to have. And I can see this being very useful in things like freeform, trying to explain a bunch of verbiage in an image instead of explaining it in a paragraph. And then you have the create memory video inside of the photos application, which is something that I cannot wait to try out because I'm a sucker for those memories that Apple creates in the photos application. I absolutely love them. I think they're very cool. You know, they're able to, it's almost like you're remembering a trip or remembering a time that Apple just puts together and you're like, oh wow, like I love that memory or I love when we were able to make that visit and things like that. So now you're able to then type a request of what you want seen in a memory and Apple will create a memory based on that request inside of the photos application. And then finally, let's talk about Siri because I think this is going to be the one that's going to make it the most useful for most people because the idea here is to make Siri an actual useful personal assistant that knows things before you even know them yourself. For instance, when to go on a flight, you know, when to take an Uber, a bunch of other different context rules that happen based on looking at stuff inside of your messages app or your mail app or something you've done in the past. So I did create a whole video comparing iOS 17 Siri versus iOS 18.1 Siri. And for the most part, Siri as of right now and how it stands with the 18.1 is a little bit smarter and does handle some requests contextually a little bit better, but for the most part, it's not like leaps and bounds better than the previous iOS 17 Siri. It just looks a lot nicer with the new animation. But some things to highlight with the new Siri is that, is that it's gonna have a much richer understanding of your language. So you're able to talk to it a little bit more informally and you don't have to really make sure that you're saying things perfectly and enunciate perfectly. You can mess up with what you're saying and then it'll still figure out what, what you're actually trying to say. So I do like that aspect of Siri and that's already happening. So for instance, if you ask Siri what the weather is and then you kind of stumble on where you're asking what the weather is and what location and then tell it what that location is, it'll then figure out what you were trying to say and then give you the correct information. It's also gonna get a lot more personalized like I mentioned earlier. So for instance, maybe your wife sends you a link to a song or something from Spotify or even maybe just an image or something in a message. 
you can then ask Siri to say, hey, play that song that my wife sent me a couple days ago on Spotify, and then it'll actually be able to pull that in because it's not only working off that contextual data from that message, but then it can also pull up the Spotify app and start playing it immediately. And that's something that I did notice in that previous video comparing the two, that Siri on the new version can get a little bit deeper into the applications, especially when it comes to directions and using Apple Maps and things like that, which is something to take into consideration. It'll also have some on-screen awareness, meaning that it's able to kind of see what's on the actual screen itself, and then you can take action upon that. For instance, if you're scrolling a web page and then you pull up Siri and say, add this address to a current contact, it'll then do that for you without you needing to copy and paste anything, grab anything out of an address file or anything like that. It'll just do it for you because Siri is able to then pull stuff from Safari and then add it into your contacts information. And then a couple other things to expect from Siri is that it has a deep knowledge and understanding of iOS, iPadOS, and the Apple ecosystem. So. For instance, if you want to maybe find out how to do something in your settings and you're just not aware on how to do that, like setting a dark mode or setting up your Wi-Fi, you can just ask Siri and it'll give you a step-by-step -step instruction on how to do that, which is something that we haven't seen before. And then of course you can even toggle things off and on in your settings from Siri. And then lastly, when it comes to interacting with Siri, of course you can use your voice, but you can now actually type to Siri. And now for those people that are saying you can actually type to Siri in the current version of it, you technically can, but it's through accessibility settings and you have to pick one or the other. Versus with the new iOS 18.1 Siri, you're able to just double tap on the little home bar on the bottom, and then you get a nice little type feel and you can just type to Siri as if you're speaking to Siri, but instead you're just typing to them. And now Apple has made it known that Siri's main focus is to make it as easy as possible to get from point A to point B with certain tasks on device itself. So being able to interact with stuff that's already in your iMessage and already in your Maps application and already in your mail, already in your photos, but maybe if there are some requests that aren't on the actual phone itself, it will be now reaching over to ChatGPT to finish that request. Two things to take into consideration here. First and foremost, it will ask you for permission every single time that it goes to ChatGPT. So there's no worrying about when it comes to privacy or it looking up automatically to ChatGPT. And then secondly, you will not need a ChatGPT subscription to take advantage of this. This is already pre-built in, which is great to have. So that is everything coming to Apple Intelligence and to your brand new iPhone come most likely October, like I mentioned. 18.1 should be slated to release towards the end of October. And even like I mentioned, with this version of 18.1, still we don't have every single thing that Apple mentioned. All the image tools for the most part are still non-existent, but everything else seems to be kind of picking up more and more. And the new Siri for me personally is getting smarter and more helpful. So I actually like Apple Intelligence. I like how Apple's going about it. I'm not somebody that really loves all the AI stuff that's been going on. You know, I'm kind of neutral about it. I use it when I need to. I don't overthink it. And that's kind of how I'm gonna be using it on my personal iPhone. If I find a way to use it and I make it easy for me to use it, then of course I'm gonna use it to make my life and my day-to-day -day tasks that much easier. But I'm not gonna go out of my way to use it if it's something that I have to remember to use, which I don't think that's going to be the case with Apple Intelligence. But let me know with a comment down below what you think. I know that there's a lot going on here in terms of what's new and how it's gonna be used, what iPhones can use it, how often can it be used, like when is it gonna to go to ChatGPT? what features are going to be relying on AI, and then there's also the rest of the iPhones that aren't going to be getting Apple Intelligence that still get 18.1. It'll just have all the other features that aren't AI related. But let me know with a comment down below what you think. Are you excited for Apple Intelligence to be put on your iPhones and be put on your iPads? I for one am excited to see a full-fledged version of it that isn't under beta, but that's just my two cents. If you guys did make it to the end, leave a lot of dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you guys want to watch more videos like this one, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. And I'm out of here, everybody. Peace. Definitely consider becoming a channel member to get some awesome wallpapers that we're getting in September. Peace.